Hello, and uh, welcome to this video about Pistol. So, uh, I changed it up a little bit, so instead of doing the live streams, because as you saw, that went disastrously last time, um, <clears throat> what I, I think probably all of the actual value um, that you typically get from watching a project getting bootstrapped, uh, I think we kind of hit that point. A lot of the stuff that I'm doing right now is just a lot of feature changes and a lot of just experimentation with different things. Um, so I think that what I'll do instead from here on out is just have documentation at each of the proper releases. So each of the, uh, what I'll call tier two releases, so this would be like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Uh, and then point releases are mostly going to be bug fixes, so that's just how I'm going to organize this package. <clears throat> um, there's been a fair bit of change uh, since the last time you would have seen um, the project. I'm actually just in the middle of uploading the the, uh, the failed live stream from last time, so uh, if you have seen that, then uh, yeah, unfortunately, I guess you'll, you'll understand why I've done this now, the way that I'm doing it. But um, basically, I've gone through, yeah, I've updated some of the documentation again. Um, I have updated the change log, I've added everything in here, so this is what I've actually done in version two. Um, 0 0.2 rather, sorry, so uh, support for local files, uh, .deb support, tar.giz, so the, the gzip tarballs, this is uh, just extracting, there's no actual binary stuff. Um, installation of custom PPA packages, which is really helpful because I've used that to install the most recent version of Python as well as all of my testing dependencies, uh, getting kind of circular, I'm actually using, I am using my own <coughs> stuff to set up my Linux distributions because I'm going through and using a ton of Linux distributions right now, so um, yeah, uh, the installation of apt packages is now possible, and uh, I ported the available resources to uh, Debian, so uh, yeah, so basically this, this whole release is mostly centered around doing Debian Linux. Um, my laptop that I use for university is running Zorin OS, which is a Debian-based operating system, and so um, it just kind of worked out serendipitously that whenever I had time during my lectures, um, uh, when I was, you know, completely paying attention, uh, <laughs> I'd be working on implementing these features, and so it just, me it just meant that trying to find time to do it in a live stream just wasn't going to work out, especially with the new semester, so um, that's also another reason why I'm no longer doing the live streams. <clears throat> Uh, on top of that, this was the cool thing for me at least, uh, was development QOL changes. So I added Noxt for the automation of distribution building and releasing, and also running tests, uh, as well as um, <clears throat> functionality and compatibility tests with PyTest, which will be coming down the road. Uh, right now they're just kind of a stub, and so um, if you've never used Nox before, uh, I'm gonna be I'm using a different version of Pystall. I can't remember what version this is. This might be a broken, random development version that I currently have installed. But the cool thing with Pystall is that, or with uh, with Nox rather, is that basically what you do is there's these not this is noxfile.py, and all that I do is I define these different what are called sessions. So I have my build session. I have my release session, I have a test session, and a doc session. And so let's just use the doc session, for example. All that I do is I do da nox s, and then in this case, docs. And so this creates a, uh, a venv of um, my Python version, so in this case it'll be 3.8, and it will go through and it will run the commands I specified, which in this case is to run the command mkdocs serve. And so mkdocs serve, uh, is another thing that I've implemented, uh, which is a system to basically allow you to write, uh, right, this won't work. This failed for a different reason. Um, this actually has nothing to do with Nox being bad. Uh, this this is entirely my bad. Um, but mkdocs basically is, a, is another system that I've implemented that allows you to have, so I write these markdown files. So you can see here, I just have something like this where it says welcome to the PyStyle docs. I just write some simple markdown. And then what I can do with that is I've now switched over from using the GitHub wiki to be able to just use a pystyle.readthedoc.io site. And you'll see it's just the exact same content and it's just on a website. And all of that was built from just inside here. I just have a bunch of different documents. And then I have a mkdocs.yaml file. And this just defines like the navigation and what theme to use and that sort of stuff. <clears throat> uh, 
and then it basically spits out this lovely thing uh, that I can use on read the docs and now I have documentation that can be hosted easily. Um, so as you can see in here, I've overhauled a lot of the documentation, including adding a contribution guide, which gives you information about what each of the files does more in detail, <clears throat> as well as like testing and documentation, um, what I'm looking at doing, how to contribute, that sort of stuff, uh, how to create binary distributions. Like it's just all the, all the documentation is just all in here, nicely organized. Um, I think that's about, it. I mean, <laughs> it's been a, that's a ton of stuff already, but um, I think that's about it. And so um, it's actually been a little while since that last live stream. <clears throat> and so uh, I've actually already started working on version 3.0.3. I guess this would be the, the third release, but uh, version 0 0.3. And so the uh, the current plan for, oh, I don't have it in here. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Oh, it might be in the master branch, actually. Yeah, it's in the master branch. Uh, so for version 0 0.3, I am planning on adding um, RPM supports uh, as well, which will be pretty simple. It's pretty trivial at this point. Um, giving a notification, um, because one of the things about installing these different applications is that you have to agree to the terms of service of those applications. Some of them just automate the installation. Uh, Chrome, for example, and so just making sure to put a message that somebody has to like hit yes to to say that like I, I agree to all of the <clears throat> terms of service of each of the programs. Um, ability to specify resources and dependencies, which will basically just then go through and download all the dependencies that you need. A generic command wrapper, so just being able to execute standard commands. Uh, at the command line, uh, so things like being able to just run, I don't know, curl a certain web page and then pipe it into grep and search for something, something obscure like that. Or uh, in the case of an actual installer, um, there's an installer for Typora, which W gets a resource, adds, I think it adds an SSH key and then does something else. And so that I have to have just a generic command wrapper for. <coughs> Um, a resource file format, so being able to take resources and put them into files, I realized with the library as it currently is, we will now see, uh, this is going to get very unmanageable very quickly because I already have just a bunch of garbage in here. And so with all of that, it means that um, what I'm going to try and do instead is I'm just going to try to put these into like a Debian based file or a Arch-based file, or a Windows file, or a Mac OS file, sorry. Ooh. And uh, just have them in a separate file, just so that it's not a cluttered up library, and then just have in here, um, dispatch based on the distro ID, and uh, go through and then just grab the grab the related packages. So the, so the library will be changing a little bit in the next release. <clears throat> Um, and then just in here, I've mentioned the changes that I made to the docs and the read the doc sites. So, um, yeah, lots of, lots of fun changes coming down the pipe. Uh, I have also gone through and I've planned out the release after that, which will have a proper contribution guide, writing some test cases, adding download bars and start working on an interesting implementation of a CLI, uh, that'll allow just the installation of resources in line. <clears throat> as well as pull up local copies of the docs, have a compile flag that just basically is an alias for that one file command, <clears throat> and uh, uh, the ability to add issues to the GitHub page quickly. This will be fun. Um, just something like issue add or something like that, and then it'll just automatically open up the issue page in the browser, and then you'll just be able to report an issue or whatever. Uh, I might look at also doing that as some sort of an automated process with logging it just checks for a logging dot error and then decides whether or not it, it'll prompt somebody to say like do you want to report this as a bug come to the page copy the command line input to your clipboard and then you can just paste it in and go from there um that'll be something i'll have to look at down the road but yeah uh for the time being um super happy the release went well everything works uh, i also the only other thing um that i did add was I added a GitHub Actions pipeline, which is super interesting. What this does is it goes through and it just runs 
um, the tests and make sure that a whole bunch of the stuff uh, works on different Python versions on different OSs. So super helpful. Um, yeah. Okay. Perfect. So thank you for watching, uh, and I will see you all in the next uh, next release video.